Have you ever thought about getting overdraft from your bank to cover your temporary cash flow or expenses in your business? Well, maybe think again. In this video, I'm going to share 10 obstacles you could face when applying for overdraft from your bank and why the alternative of working with a private investor might be a better move for you and your business. Number 10. Banks require the lending to be for a specific purpose, not just for general cash flow in your business. This means that you need to be able to prove that these are just temporary bills and you're going to be able to get the funds to pay them back really quickly. This also means that you can't apply for overdrafts just to cover unexpected expenses if they crop up. You need to be specific about what those expenses would be, even if they're hypothetical, in order to allow the bank to approve your application. Number nine. Your bank needs to see a track record of profit and cash flow in your business. So if over the past 12 months of trading or 10 months of trading, you've been supplementing your business and your business bank accounts with your own income, then as a director's loan, for example, then they're going to struggle to be able to give you the overdraft that you're looking for and approve it. Another reason that lenders at banks want to see cash flow and profit in your business over your last trading year is to see that you're actually going to be able to pay back the money that you're borrowing if you go into overdraft. So if you've spent your first 12 months just breaking even in your business, then the banks are going to struggle to approve an application for using overdraft. Number eight, I've mentioned this already, banks don't like to see directors' loans going into the business bank account to boost the income or keep it afloat. This is a really worrying sign for business bank lenders. And often the problem is this is necessary in the first 12 months of trading for most business owners. Number seven, banks will rarely take into account that your fixed business overhead will decrease as you scale. So if you're not making clean profit and a hefty profit at a small scale, they're unlikely to approve lending for you to grow and therefore reduce that relative fixed overhead and hence increase those profit margins. When banks and lenders are looking at your bank statements, they can't really tell which of those things are fixed overheads and which of them will be expenses that increase as you trade more and your business grows. Number six, banks don't like approving overdraft lending more than once, as it suggests to your bank that you can't budget your expenses properly. If you apply for £10,000 in overdraft and it gets approved, and then you find three months later that actually now you need £15,000 of overdraft and you want to increase your overdraft, they don't like this because this suggests to them that you don't know how to budget your expenses properly and you haven't considered all of the worst case scenarios and all of the potential unexpected costs that could crop up. So what they want you to do is apply the first time for the maximum amount that you and anticipate that you might need, and even in the worst case scenarios. A five, but you see the problem with this is the more that you apply for, the less likely the banks are to actually lend you those funds. Number four, if you are running a business in property, banks do not like lending for heavy refurbishment and renovation works in your overdraft, even if this is just a matter of a deficit in cash flow temporarily. Don't know the reason for this. However, likely the reasoning is the same as why when you're doing large scale or heavy refurbishment jobs on renovations on properties, you can't get a normal mortgage product. You need to get some sort of bridging product for your financing, because if you're doing heavy works, then the value of your asset is at risk. They think it's at risk. Uh, because if you're bashing all of the walls about, you could bash all of the walls about, leave the property in a total mess, and suddenly the value of the underlying assets of your business drops considerably. So it's a riskier move, and so they don't like doing that in overdraft. They don't like doing it for normal mortgage products, let alone overdraft. And therefore, number three, on a related note, banks are more likely to give you more flexibility with overdraft if you have underlying assets that your business owns. This gives the bank more protection. So if they need at some point to claim the funds back or something goes terribly wrong with your business, they know that they have those assets that they could likely pull upon or claim against in order to get those funds back. So there's a higher level of security there if your business doesn't just trade and if it also has underlying assets that it owns. Number two, now this is a tricky one that catches a lot of people out. Banks often don't just charge a crazy high interest rate. I think at Lloyd's at the moment, it's about 17%. It's unbelievable what the interest rate is for overdraft at the moment. However, they also, to top it all off, charge you an annual fee, which is just a fee that you pay in order to have the right to even use that overdraft and borrow from the bank at 17%. If you want the rights to borrow 10 to 20,000 pounds from your bank and be able to go into that in overdraft as and when you need, your bank will probably charge you several hundred pounds per year as an annual fee just to have the right to do that. Number one, the final thing that I have learned as a property investor with several businesses in the real estate market in the UK, I just mentioned a 17% interest rate. That is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. 
you will find, therefore, that lending from banks will be about twice as high, if not considerably higher, as most private lending investors in the real estate industry in the UK will charge for you to borrow their cash. So, given all of these things, it might be better to go down the route of private finance. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you're interested in content like this, then you might want to check out my latest video here. And if there's a specific thing that you'd like me to cover, then leave a comment down below and I'll give you another video covering that specific thing. And if you have any ideas for requests of the kind of content you'd like to see, then again, leave a comment below and click the subscribe button if you want to see more of my experience of finance, business and investing themed stuff. And you can also head over to my website if you want to learn more. But ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls and everyone occupying that delicious space in between, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.